The integration of AI services, large language models like ChatGPT, into our workflow, into our desktop experience can be tricky. We've seen different companies try to bring it into our daily usage, and sometimes we don't kind of like that intrusion. I've written a tool which is free and it's open source, which allows you to use large language models for doing text processing right from the Windows desktop, not in your browser, not in uh, any other kind of thing directly from the desktop, which means it can be integrated into your workflow, regardless of whether you're using the web or an application, you can have access to it there. I won't tell you much more now, I'm gonna deal with it all in the video, but as I said, it's free, it's open source, uh, and it's available today. So if you wanna find out more, please, let me explain. Okay, there are many, many, many AI applications out there on the web, on mobile, uh, on the desktop. But here's an honest question for you. Beyond the hype, uh, and, and I'm just as, like anyone else, I like to try out the new services, see what they are, you know. But how many of them do you actually use consistently on a daily basis or maybe two or three times a week? How, you know, how often do you use them? Well, image generation, maybe, maybe that's your thing. Um, text tools, certainly that can be useful, a bit of coding. You know, what is it that you use consistently? Well, for me, it's text tools uh, and coding. Now, of course, I can be always cut and pasting things into, you know, ChatGPT or into Claude or into Bing or whatever it is that I'm, I'm using. But I find that I want a tool that I can just use as part of my workflow. So I wrote a text tool that I personally find useful, and I hope you find useful. It's not based on the web, it's not just for the web browser, it's for anything you're doing on the desktop. Uh, it's not mobile based because I do most of my typing at a keyboard, a proper keyboard, which means on my desktop. It's called very unimaginably AI tray. That's just uh, you know the simplest thing I could think of. It's a Windows tray app that works with Google Gemini. Why Google Gemini? Because you get access to the API with Google Gemini for free. With other services like Claude, Grok, or OpenAI, you need to uh, pay something. But it's free with Google uh, Gemini. It takes the contents from what's in the clipboard, it asks Gemini to do something with it, and then it pastes the result back into the clipboard. So you, you're working there, copy something into the clipboard, you hit the button, and then what comes back into the clipboard is that that worked, that processed version. Now, before you start, you're going to need an API key from Google. You go over to aistudio.google.com, and there's a button there to take you to the API key. If you want to the full URL, it's app slash API key. And you should also enable clipboard history on Windows 11, that's optional. So basically this is a screenshot of what it looks like on Google AI Studio. You can hit this create API key. It will give you a, a string about 39, 40 characters long. You need to save that and put it in the program. I'll show you that in a minute. And if you want to enable the clipboard history, you go into the settings and there's a thing here, clipboard history. You can just turn that on. Okay, so let's have a look at it running. Okay, so here I am on the Windows desktop. If we look down here, here we can see the AI tray tool running. If you right hand click on it, you get the menu coming up. And the first thing we do is go into settings because here you need to set your API key as I showed you, you have to go over to uh, Google Studio and get yourself an AI key. And you just paste that into there like that. We won't worry about the custom prompt yet. We'll deal with that in a minute. So the way the tool works like this, I've got some text here uh, in any program. It doesn't matter whether it's a web browser, you know, Gmail, whether it's in a Word, Word or in a, a LibreOffice or even here in the notepad. You need to get some text. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna select it and then just copy that and if you activate the clipboard history now you can see there it is on the clipboard and now what we do is go over to the AI tray and we say what do I do with that well I want to make it uh, shorter so you click on shorter and it will go away it will talk to Google Gemini and then it will come back and it will put it into the clipboard so you can either activate the clipboard here and see now there's a second one there that's come up or we could just replace this text here uh, with uh, paste and there you go it's much shorter usb four significant improvements on previous and offering 40 minutes so it's taken the same text uh, and made it shorter let's go back to our original text again let's try something else copy put that in the clipboard go down here well let's have it extend now extend will actually 
uh, not only does make it long, it will include its own knowledge and things in making that longer. We now cut and paste it back in and let's see what we've got. There we go. Three paragraphs have now come out because it's made that uh, much longer talking about USB 4 according to what the large language model understands. Let's go back again to our original text. Let's just try one more thing. Copy. Let's go down here and we're going to say uh, summarize. Okay, let's see what that brings up. There you go, another two lines summarizing. Of course, you can do that with lots of much longer text and so on. Now, another thing you can do is you can set a custom prompt. So I'm going to say, uh, tell me a joke based on this text. Okay, now the rest of the program handles uh, the rest of the stuff that you need to do. So I'm just going to click save. Okay, and we're not going to, uh, we're not going to do it. We're going to, we're going to see two ducks walk into a bar that's all we're going to say put that in the clipboard now go down here and we're going to hit custom and it comes back with a joke two ducks walk into a bar the button and looked up and says hey we have a drink named after you one duck said you've got a drink named quack that's amazing the bartender replies no it's called a duck's mai tai a duck's mai tai okay <laughs> there it is so it's tried to <laughs> It's tried to create us a joke based on that. You could use any prompt you want, how you want it rewritten, what style you want, whatever you want to do, it's customized. You, so obviously, if you look down here at the menu, I've got some things in here to make it more professional, make it more friendly, summarize, extend it. But you could put in whatever's your favorite prompt for text processing and it will be there built into the uh, AI Tray program. Okay, so there it is. So where is it? What is it? Well, it's written in C Sharp using Visual Studio 2022. The code is in my GitHub repository, github.com, Gary explains slash AI tray. Here is just some snippets of the code just to give you a gentle introduction to it. Basically, there's this end prompt. The code is pretty self-explanatory if you understand some C Sharp. And at the end of every prompt, I do add on, don't offer multiple options, just rewrite the text as instructed, colon, and then two blank lines to give you a distinction between the prompt and the text. And I added that bit in for every request because sometimes it was coming back and saying, here are five different ways that I could rewrite that text. And I don't want that, I just want one uh, rewrite way of doing it. Uh, it's a Te template, boilerplate really, uh, Windows application tray program. Uh, and the other thing is when for each item on the menu, you know, rewrite item, spell check item, pro item, pretty redundant. It's just cut and paste, cut and paste really. I'm sure there's probably better ways to do this with more dynamic uh, ways. We'll talk more about how this could be improved uh, in a moment, but transform the text below to enhance its engagement, improve clarity and optimize readability. Uh, and then basically, correct the spelling and grammar in the following text. And then in each of these cases, you'll get that prompt, you'll get the end prompt, and then it puts in the clipboard text because it's got here clipboard get text. And it gets that text and just adds it on the end there. So really you're taking the prompt, you're taking that end prompt to say, don't give me multiple versions. And then you've got the prompt from the clipboard. And then once the result comes back, uh, it just puts it back into the clipboard with that same clipboard uh, function here, but it's set text rather than get text. It's really as simple as that. If you look at the code in GitHub, it's 500 lines long in total, not very long, and a lot of it is very repetitive. It's just one item here for rewrite, one item here for spell check, and goes through all that stuff. So as I said, it is open source. You can fork it if you want to, create your own one, or better still, contribute to this one, and we can improve it. Loads of things that could be done. We could make it more dynamic, maybe some kind of uh, setup uh, thing at the beginning that just takes all the prompts and then it's kind of dynamically builds the, the menu up. It could read it in from a configuration file, maybe some JSON, comma separated list, whatever. It'd be quite easy. We could add in support for OpenAI, for Claude, for Grok, even though they're paid for services, we could, add, you know, put that in there. Uh, multiple custom prompts, not just the one, custom prompts for the pre-prompt and the end prompt, loads of stuff that could be done. Even working, you could actually make it a whole program based on Llama.cpp, so we could have, a, it actually just does it all locally, runs a small, you know, couple of billion parameter model and runs it all locally. Nothing gets sent out over, over the internet, of course, just as a caveat for that, if you are cutting and pasting things, be aware you are sending it to Gemini. 
you are sending it to Google Gemini and then it's coming back. So just so that you know that. So don't cut and paste your financial history or your medical history in there and ask, uh, you know, Gemini to rewrite it for you. That's not what you want to do. But for everything else, you're probably pretty OK. OK, that's it. AI Trey, I'd love to hear your thoughts. Uh, we could improve it together you know, contribute to the project, tell me what you think, uh, feature requests and so on. If this is going to get some traction behind it, let's uh, lift it up to the next level. Love to hear your thoughts. Okay, that's it. My name is Gary Sims. This is Gary Explains. I really hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do give it a thumbs up. And if you like these kind of videos, then stick around, subscribe to the channel. Okay, that's it. I'll see you in the next one.